it's looking at the bigger picture and saying there are more days that I am drawing than I'm not drawing. And I think if those days of you drawing more out outlast and outweigh the days that you don't draw, then you're in good shape. Hi, I'm Patrick Balseroff. I'm at WonderCon. I am an illustrator, educator, and all around fun guy, I hope. Welcome. I wanted to do like a old timey Batman looking character behind a Batmobile. So, and the Batmobile is like old timey too. Classic-y kind of looking. Sick. How does this translate into your professional work? Um, you know, I guess yeah, just starting a, an illustration in general. Any tips you have? I think a lot of it just has to deal with what you like and what you want to get into. Now, when you're first starting off, that could be pretty difficult because, yeah, I like to draw or I like to make things, but what do I want to do with that? A lot of those things weren't introduced to me till later in my career yeah. when I started taking classes. And I think that's the good thing about finding a school that has some sort of structure because when you don't have that, you're, you could be like aimlessly looking around on YouTube or TikTok or whatever new social media is out there. Yeah. And that could be kind of daunting because there's so much. You don't know what's good. You don't know what's bad. So what I do or what I suggest my students to do is, you know, ask friends or who they're taking class with, who their teachers are. And the biggest thing is having that curiosity to ask those questions, right? It's super important to take ownership of your education as an artist. Uh, because if you're just kind of going with the flow and you're not really sure, oh, I guess I'll do this, oh, I guess I'll do that, and you're not really paying attention or asking any questions, that's kind of when you get in trouble a little bit. And I think when I first started, I wanted to get into illustration, and but more importantly, concept art, because of course, that's when a lot of these art of books started coming up, like art of Clone Wars, an awesome work of like Ian McKegg, Doug Chang, and Feng Zhu, and you're like, oh my gosh, where are all these secrets coming from? How are they learning all this stuff? And everyone always says, oh, go back to your foundations. Learn how to draw the characters. Learn how to draw figures and your anatomy, perspective, all that stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. Where do I do that? That's the thing. Like, where do you go next? Yeah. You don't know. People tell you like, oh, you do this, you do that. But it's kind of hard because one thing that works for someone may not work for another people. You can't do a one size fits all. Right. Uh, I know a little bit about your background. Like, well, we, I think we both went to the Watts Atelier. Yes. And it's been cool to see how different your academic training is to the kind of art that you do for uh, your, your, your job and your, oh, yeah. your, for money, essentially. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to see those academic skills translate to something a little bit more uh, illustrative and a little bit more cartoony and fun. Mm -hmm. When I was doing a lot of my fundamentals, I was told that it was too cartoony. Yeah. And, and I was like, but that's what I like yeah, to yeah. do. Absolutely. Like, can I do that? And it wasn't like I couldn't do that, but for what I was learning, there was a certain way that it is supposed to look to get that training and to get that foundation. And so th I think that's the thing that I was fighting with is figuring out what is that balance of learning, but also retaining my own kind of voice, yeah. returning my own style. Yeah, your soul. Yeah. And I, I think part of it is, even as a student, you have to have an open mind to what your teachers are showing you. Not just blindly following, but allowing them to explain and show you different ways to think so that you can take pieces of that and learn from that as well. And that's kind of what I'm doing here, taking things that I've learned from you know, figure drawing, taking things that I've learned from you know, vehicle design, mech design, from the class that I've taken before and, and I teach now dynamic sketching, all those things and just having to become the stuff that I draw, yeah. having to become more my voice. And that's something you can't force. It really does happen over, over time and as you develop stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. So right now I'm just kind of defining some shapes here to pop out the character from the car. Um, grounding the car a little bit. Some of my perspective is in there. Is everything perfect and aligned? Oh, heck no, by no means. But for me, you know, considering this kind of a sketch or an iteration or an idea, one, it's pretty close. You know, not exact, but pretty close. 
And two, what I'm trying to do this whole time is I am just trying to make this thing feel solid and volumetric. Yes, I started with the character, but as I was moving to the car, the main thing I was thinking of, how do I create volume here? So you see all this hatching in detail. I'm not seeing that. What I'm seeing in actuality is just this, just the box. If you're looking to get better at drawing, you're going to want to take a look at my figure drawing fundamentals course. Get started for free by going to proco.com slash figure and adding the course to your classroom. You can upgrade to premium at any time and unlock exclusive instructional videos and a fully narrated figure demo. Proco.com slash figure. A question I always get from students is how do you get your style, you know? And it's not something that is obvious, and it's not something that happens overnight. And I feel like people put too much pressure on the idea of style in general. Like they feel like they have to figure it out in a couple of years or something, versus it being something that is always changing over their entire career, especially. You have to kind of put it in perspective. There are two artists I'll name. One is Pablo Picasso, the other one, Mike Mignola. If you look at Picasso's like earlier work, he was truly like a figurative person, figurative artist, like realistic, all everything. And then as he grew and developed, came up with a new art form, a new art style. Same thing with Mike Mignola. If you see some of his earlier stuff, you see that it's, you know, like a lot of comic book artists with the muscles showing, everything kind of spelled out. But now when you look at it, he again also redefined comics with a more graphic style. Absolutely, yeah. And his stuff has become some of my favorite comic book stuff ever. So, cool, so cool to see. Yeah. I mean, even beyond just being comics, they're just cool images to look yep. at. It shows you that you can change. You can still develop, and it doesn't have to be the end-all be-all. If you do one thing, it does really well. I think what happens is it can be jarring for your audience to start to see you do something different like hey what's the other stuff i like the other stuff and that's the part where you have to balance that out with especially if it's your livelihood like okay i'm figuring this stuff out am i going too far or do i am i having enough time to develop this to turn this into something that i want um, versus i'm gonna rush it i'm just gonna do it oh it's not working uh, never mind move on to the next and I'm guilty of doing that as well. Our, all artists kind of move through those things quickly at times. You can't beat yourself up. What you can do is, just like a sketchbook, turn the page. Yeah. So when you feel stuck or whatever, it's okay. You're figuring it out, turn the page. It, it's almost essentially a blank canvas. Let's start from there. Yeah. Uh, for people that are wanting to draw from their heads more, do you have any uh, recommendations or thoughts? Or? In order to draw from your head, you have to draw a lot from life. That's basic. You can't make up what you don't know. And that, that's with a caveat. I don't, I don't mean to say you can't be inventive, you can't create new worlds and stuff, but all of those things that you see, characters and things like that, are based off of, you know, for characters, either archetypes, there are certain nuances that are standard that you need to follow in order to make something look and feel cohesive. That goes for characters, drawings, whatever you may be doing. But I think once you start to get those things down and understand those things, that's where you can start to take liberties and start to invent, move things around, play around with things. A lot of artists that really push the boundaries with their design, they're pushing proportions and style and you always wonder, my gosh, I would never think to do something like that. But how in the world did they do that? How does that work? Yeah. Um, it's because they've practiced it enough and they've probably done enough drawings to say that, yeah, if I go this way, it's not gonna work, but if I try this, that'll work a little bit better. So a lot of it is trial and error. To me, it seems like uh, style is just an amalgamation of a bunch of different things coming together, like a bunch of old things coming together to create a new thing. You yeah. Know? It's funny, it is. It's a lot of the, the classes, the courses. It, it is rebranding and packaging. And you know, there there is no, I wouldn't say there is no mystery around it, but artists don't hide the fact that they're learning from other artists and learning how to communicate it to others in a different way, maybe, I guess, quote unquote, modern way. And so for me doing this stuff here, what I'm doing here, this is all just like industrial design stuff related in a sense of just your simple boxes, lining things up, carving away, thinking about line quality, and a little bit of illustration flair comes with the ba my background in you know, figure drawing, illustration, kids' books, all that stuff. So combining the two, you know, I'm able to draw cars and mechs and things that probably I never would have thought to put together, but now I love doing it on a daily basis, daily sketches, whatever it may be. 
and it just makes it more fun and more me than anything else. It's like Absolutely. I'm not chasing someone. Well, I, I found that it doesn't matter how good of a student is technically. It matters like their actual curiosity and genuine interest in the subject. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. anyone can get good, but I guess that drive and that passion for it is something you really can't. It's something you have to cultivate for yourself, you know? Yeah, I, I've seen so many artists that were not originally in the art field or intended to be in the art field, and they just excelled because of how much they kicked their butt at it. Yeah. It's looking at the bigger picture and saying, there are more days that I am drawing than I'm not drawing. And I think if those days of you drawing more out, outlast and outweigh the days that you don't draw, then you're in good shape. Do you still do uh, life sketching at all? or? I used to do a lot more when I was traveling, yeah. but ever since everything happened, I didn't travel as much. Right. It, it sounds weird, but I look forward when there's lines somewhere. Yeah. Like if I'm at a coffee shop, I'm like, oh, nice. Or drawing and just sketch the people around me or come up with little stories. And I think trying to find that time, however you can, however, even if it's just five minutes, even if it's just, you know, one minute just to do a quick sketch, it all counts. Yeah, yeah. What's the best way for like an amateur artist to get started at? Like yeah, I mean, what what generally interests you? Is there anything that makes you go, dang, that's awesome? How do they do that? Or and you have a general interest in it? Um, I don't know. I, I really like David Cho. I actually just met him. Yeah. What? Do you know David Cho? Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He was here. I like his stuff a lot, and like, yeah. but I also like realistic, like Bronx Zoo and just like the classic. So if it is more figurative work that you want to do, then that makes it easier. Okay, let me go more in a figure drawing direction. So I just go to like figure drawing classes and just try my best to like yeah, yeah, no, You should, but you should find a good teacher. Uh, That's right. the important thing. I think part of taking classes is also figuring out how you learn, right. how you respond to things. Do you teach on this platform? I teach on two online platforms. One is Concept Design Academy and the other one is CGMA. Uh, would you want to talk about anything that, you know, any of your, uh, where to find you, anything that you want to promote? Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. So the biggest thing right now is I am actually working with a company called Piper and Enza and, and I've been able to do a kids books with them and the newest kids book that's out and that's going to be released soon is called Running of the Noses. It's just really just a way for parents through storytelling and reading books on explaining you know, how it is to get sick, what are some symptoms, what are symptoms. I'm able to do what I do here and make it, in a sense, kind of digestible but also fun for parents and kids at the same time. Uh, yep. Nice. Awesome, man. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course. Sick. Do you have any other closing thoughts? Or, uh... When it comes down to it, yeah, you, if you want to make a career out of it, you can. It's not always easy. It's not always hard. There are going to be times where you don't feel like you're having fun, but through it all, you still want to be able to find that big kid and remember why you want to start doing this. and get back into making art that does make you smile. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. Cool. Nice.